So Man City haven't always been this flash, crazy rich behemoth chucking 60 million quid at anyone with a fancy haircut. Let's take a look into the dark, murky world of City prior to the Scheichmann Sword takeover in August 2008 and rate their last 32 signings they were forced to make for no other reason than the fact that they were practically broke. Andy Cole 7 out of 10. This just shows how much of a threat Man City were not to their local rivals. They weren't even a dot on their radar, not even a blink on their system. And it just shows in the fact that the former Old Trafford hero Andy Cole was prepared to rock up the club and nobody battered an eyelid. If someone swapped Old Trafford for the idiot nowadays, that man would probably be wiping yogurt, actually, who are we kidding, it's Manchester, actual human feces off his car for the next six months. But back in the early 2000s, many United legends were ending up at Eastlands, purely for a quick buck, and for the convenience of not having to pull their kids out of school. It was sort of like watching your ex-girlfriend wind up in the arms of your next door neighbor. A short, stumpy, balding man who smells of sweat, cheese, and loneliness. There would be no jealousy, you'd just feel bad for her. And so Cole was a 34-year-old free transfer from Fulham in the summer 2005, scored 10 goals in 23 games during his only season at the club. Yeah, why not? I'll give him a 7 out of 10. Darius Vassell, 6 out of 10. Placed above, it was only 13 years ago the club's marquee signing was Darius Vassell from Aston Villa for 2 million quid. You know, the lad whose last act in an English shirt was fluffing his lines in a penalty shootout and becoming a goddamn national pariah. His time at City was bang average. 17 goals in 103 league games for a centre forward is absolutely pathetic. What, was he allergic to goals? But hey, he did score in a 3 1 derby win, so I'll give him an alright 6 out of 10 score. Georges Samras, 3 out of 10. Georges Samaras was a £6 million arrival from here in Veen in January 2006, a club which had recently produced Real Madrid bound Klaus Jan Huntelaar. If City were hoping that they would repeat the trick, it's a bit like seeing someone buy a shiny new Harley Davidson from a bike shop, and so when you turn up hoping to get the same deal, you're instead sold a soggy old box with two plastic wheels. Samaras was an absolute joke of a footballer, I'm sorry but he was. He played 54 league games for the club, 8 goals, 8 goals from a centre forward, absolutely embarrassing. Demarcus Beasley 5 out of 10, a summer deadline day loan signing for PSV. Marcus Beasley was actually highly rated in the mid 2000s. He didn't do much at City, he was blighted by injury, but the USA winger did score 3 in 18 games. I'll give him a bang average 5 out of 10. Jamel Abdoun, 1 out of 10. What an absolutely pointless signing. This man never even played a Premier League match. An Algerian winger, he arrived on loan from AG Axio in January 2007, made one substitute appearance in an FA Cup tie against Southampton before rotting in the cupboard under the stairs and eventually being returned to sender in May. Emil Penza, 4 out of 10. According to his book, Sir Bobby Robson once identified this man as Alan Shearer's potential the replacement. For his own sake, thank Christ he never did. This was a bizarre signing. Impenza was a Belgian striker playing at the back house of Qatar and was only signed by City after playing and scoring in a specially arranged match at Eastlands in February 2007. You've essentially signed someone off the back of a charity game. Then again, why am I surprised? Stuart Pearce was a man whose tactics consisted of hoofing it long and chucking the goalie up front. Impenza lasted a little over a year, scored very few goals and was released in July 2008, one month before the takeover. Paul Dickoff, 1 out of 10. A Manchester City legend. If not for his last gasp strike against Gillingham in the 99 playoff final, who knows where City would be these days. Instead of Pep, Aguero and league titles, they could be stuck halfway down the fourth division making bids for Luke Varney and Gary Taylor Fletcher. Dickoff returned a hero in May 2006 on a free transfer from Blackburn and then went about doing absolutely nothing for six months. This is why you don't go back. This was not the sharp and elusive of Paul Dickoff of old. This man was 33 years old, had a back problem and made 16 appearances without scoring a goddamn goal. Usman Dabo 4 out of 10. Well, Usman Dabo's legacy at Man City didn't transcend itself to being anything other than getting his face smashed in by Joey Barton and having the man arrested. Yeah, after a training ground spat, this free transfer from Lazio had his face turned into a mashed potato and not the sort of mashed potato you'd want to put in a shepherd's pie. This was literally the only thing of note he did in his two years at Manchester. Get beaten up by his teammates. Considering the man was nearly blinded, I'd be nice and I'll give him a generous 4 out of 10. And yeah, Yes, that is being generous. Hatem Trebelsi, 5 out of 10. Only two years earlier, Hatem Trebelsi had been on the verge of a transfer to Arsenal to link up with the Invincibles. It never happened, and so his first taste of English football was rocking up in the defence with Ben Thatcher and Sonji Hai. A free transfer from Ajax, the Tunisian right back, who'd represented his country at three World Cups, was hailed as a coup. Instead, he was just some lad running down the clock on one last payday, making 20 underwhelming appearances before retiring at the end of the season at the age of 30. Although he did score a nice goal at Old Trafford, but. I mean, they still lost the game, so, so, so who cares? Demar Hamann, 5 out of 10. A summer signing, Demar Hamann arrived for half a million pounds, roughly 20 minutes after signing a three-year contract at Bolton Wanderers. Maybe he caught a glimpse of Big Sam in the shower, who knows? Either way, the man practically hopped out the bathroom window and hopped a bus to Manchester. He lasted three years and didn't do much before finishing up his career at MK Dance. Bernardo Corradi, 2 out of 10. This is a signing that makes City fans probably want to get sick in their mouth. Honestly, looking at transfers like this, it's probably like Kim Kardashian getting embarrassed by their earlier Facebook photos, where, you know, before the cosmetic surgeries and million pounds worth of 
makeup, she probably looked like a foot. While City are splashing out of world class forwards these days, it was only 10 years ago they were chucking less than 2 million quid on Bernardo Carvalho from Valencia. And he was absolutely woeful. 3 goals in 29 appearances is laughably bad for City's marquee signing. Joe Hart, 9 out of 10. Finally, now we are talking. Yes, I know this man's career is currently stuck halfway down the toilet bowl, but I'm sorry. For £810,000, a summer signing from Shrewsbury down the back arse of League 2, you're damn right this signing is getting a good 9 out of 10. Yes, it took him four years to finally grab the number one shirt, but let's. 348 games, two league titles, an FA Cup, two League Cups and four Golden Glove awards. If you told Hart he would be achieving this as City, when he was walking headfirst into a 2006 squad that no doubt smelt of Jeep six week old milk, he'd have probably laughed in your face. Andreas Isaacson, four out of 10. If you sign someone who's just started in goal for Sweden at the 2006 World Cup. When Scandinavians have a history of producing top class goalies, and especially for just 2 million quid, you'd have thought, great bit of business. Except no, a 2 million recruit from Rennes in August 2006, another club with a good track record for keepers, he was supposed to replace David James. He didn't, instead spending half his time in the treatment room. He didn't make his debut until December, playing 45 minutes of a derby defeat at Old Trafford. He did have a decent run at the end of the season, playing 10 games, keeping 4 clean sheets, and saving a penalty from Jermaine Defoe. But then the injuries returned, he found himself back on the bench, and the final nail in the coffin was the fact he conceded 8 goals on the final day of the goddamn season. Which is essentially like going on a Tinder date and then taking a dump in her meal. You could be fairly confident that there will be no date number 2. Actually, be lucky not to be arrested. Michael Ball, 5 out of 10. It was always a bit weird that Michael Ball, a born and bred scouser, was spending 2 years on the bench at PSV. But hey, he was a free transfer signing for City in January 2007 after impressing on trial. He played 48 league games at left back, received the captain's armband for one match in August 2008. Oh, and he also stamps on Ronaldo's stomach. Yes, this man almost punctured the liver of the world's most valuable footballer. Giovanni, 6 out of 10. This was actually an exciting signing at the time. I mean, yes, he was another freebie. I mean, this was in an era where City would rather chew off their arm than actually spend some cash. But in July 2007, after being turned down by Portsmouth following a trial, the former Benfica midfielder linked up with Man City in July 2007. He scored in his debut and a 2 0 win at West Ham, before following that up with the winner against Man United to keep City top of the league. Then it all dried up. He only scored one more goal against Wigan, found himself chucked on the bench, and was shown the door in May. Gelson Fernandez, 4 out of 10. Captain of the Swiss under 21 side, big things were expected of Gelson Fernandez when he linked up with Man City in July 2007 for four million quid. He was very much a massive waste of time. The midfielder scored in a 2 0 win at Newcastle in January 2008, but didn't do much other than that. Quite a poor signing. Rolando Bianchi, 3 out of 10. An 8.8 .8 million signing from Regina. Again, Rolando Bianchi proved that City just could not sign half decent centre forwards. He scored in his debut against West Ham, and then that was pretty much it. Three more goals in 20 odd games before demanding he wanted to leave after a few months due to England's poor diet. Yes, that's what it was, Bianchi. It had nothing to do with you being a pitiful excuse of a striker. Yeah, it had everything to do with Richard Dunn snacking on a pack of the monster much before the game. Good lad. Martin Petrov, 6 out of 10. Martin Petrov was a Bulgarian superstar. A pacey winger, he was plucked straight out of the Atletico Madrid team and into the city squad. Don't get it twisted though, it wasn't exactly a Rodri deal. This Atletico team couldn't even qualify for the UEFA Cup and were getting smashed 6-0 at home by Barcelona. Petrov had a decent first season at City, 5 goals in 34 games, before the takeover and the arrival of genuine world class stars, squeezed him out the door to bolt in 2010. Valery Boyanov, 2 out of 10. Like Petrov, Valery Boyanov was a Bulgarian hero and if FIFA stats were anything to go by, was surely on course to become the greatest footballer on the planet. So computer nerds worldwide were shocked to see him swap Juventus for Man City. A £7 million signing, he then suffered a knee ligament injury in his first start against Man United, ruling him out for the rest of the season. He bounced back again in pre-season, smashing home a strike in off the crossbar against AC Milan and looked ready to make up for lost time. And then on the opening day of that season, he was ruled out for six months after tearing his Achilles in the warm-up. Christ above, that man's luck. I wouldn't be surprised if he also burnt the toast, tripped on the stairs and accidentally microwaved the cat. Oh, poor lad. And so, after signing in 2007, he didn't make his first start for the club until March 2009, playing an hour against Sunderland. He scored against Tottenham on the final day of the season, which was his only goal for City. 11 games, 1 goal, what an absolute disaster. Javier Garrido, 3 out of 10. Listen, I'm not questioning the Sandy of Senor Nerks, but why on earth would you sign a left back who can't actually defend? A 1.5 million pound signing from Real Sociedad in August 2007, he was absolutely hopeless. Just look at his display in a 6-0 defeat at Stamford Bridge, he played with all the grace of a constipated pigeon. Veteran Troluca, 8 out of 10. Here we go, an actual good signing. Snapped up for 8 million quid from Dynamo Zagreb, Vecin Troluca, a man who would go on to make over 100 appearances for Croatia, had a decent first season, 6 0 horror show at Stanford Bridge aside, and it was a surprise when he was sold to Spurs the following year. Richard Martin, 1 out of 10. What a pointless signing for everyone involved. Yes, I get the third choice goalies don't really play, but this was a lad whose last three clubs were Kingstonian, Dorchester Town, and Folkestone Invicta. 
They sound like old man pubs, never mind genuine football teams. What was Fenio and Erickson doing snapping them up in August 2007? He never played, signed for Yeovil two years later and then retired five years after that, at the age of 26, at Burgess Hill Town. Elano 7 out of 10. Don't get me wrong, this man had all the talent. An exciting playmaker plucked from Shakhtar Donetsk for 8 million quid. At the time, he was starting for Brazil. But according to the likes of Craig Bellamy, his attitude and work rate was absolutely pathetic and was only exacerbated by the arrivals of fellow Brazilians. Yes, there were spectacular goals, stunning free kicks and bouts of good form. But there were also lengthy spells where he'd go missing, none more so than at the Riverside when he produced one of the most spineless midfield performances known to man. As he watched Borough, a team who within a year would be relegated, score 8 goals. 8 goals! For that alone, he should have been shot dead on the spot! Neri Castillo, 3 out of 10. Christ above, this is just a woeful shopping basket. Neri Castillo was a Mexican forward, a loan signing from Shakhtar Donetsk in January 2008. He was so desperate to come, he even paid half the loan fee himself. City, have you no shame? Just pay the goddamn fee! Considering he played just 9 goalless games before returning to sender, the man probably felt like drowning his accountant in a goddamn bath. We're not trying to talk him out of it. Benjani, 7 out of 10. Yep, eight months before the club were parading Rabinho, they were having to sweat on whether or not Benjani would wake up at the goddamn airport in time to catch his flight. This was a man who didn't score in his first 14 games for Portsmouth, and yet here City were, forking out a potential 8 million quid on a lad who'd just gone through a purple patch of form. No, it wasn't the Benjani from his last few months at Fratton Park. It was very much a slow, overweight, and let's be honest, a lazy centre forward who plundered to four league goals in 23 appearances. But hey, I mean, he did score the winner at Old Trafford, so for City fans, uh, worth every penny. Philippe Saicedo, 6 out of 10. Like Bajani, Philippe Saicedo was a deadline day arrival. Five million pounds from Basel. He was hailed as one of the great South American talents and on a par with Adriano. Yes, the one at Inter Milan. If I'm holding him to that standard, then Saicedo was by contrast a big lump of toilet bleach. But he wasn't completely horrific. I mean, seven goals in 34 games isn't great, but it's not something that would make you bleed from the nose. Joe, one out of 10. This would though. This takeover was the worst thing to happen to Joe's career. Signed a month before Shaikh Mansour flew into town, he was a club record 90 million pound signing from CSK in Moscow. If City hadn't won the lottery a month later, City would have been forced to persist with this fella. I mean they didn't. He struggled initially, not so much as sneezing in front of a goal, and so instead of showing him time and patience like they originally would have done, he was fobbed off to Everton on loan within 6 months. 21 league games, 1 goal. Talbot Haim, 3 out of 10. This was exactly the sort of Deadwood signing that the likes of Schreich Mansour would have been demanding be extracted from the club. Talbot Haim was the sort of dusty cobweb you need to get rid of when you move into your brand new mansion. A £5 million signing from Chelsea in July 2008. His league debut just happened to coincide with the shipping of 4 goals and with Gabriel Bonlahor scoring a goddamn hat trick. Is it any wonder Ben Haim didn't last much longer after that? Sean Wright Phillips, 5 out of 10. This was supposed to be the perfect reunion. Signed for 8.5 million pounds after three unfulfilling years warming the bench at Stamford Bridge, Sean Wright Phillips scored two in his second debut in a 3-0 win at Sunderland and generally had a pretty decent season. The following year he struggled, the year after that he barely played and was eventually spat out to QPR in 2011 where his career has since died a death. Vincent Company, 10 out of 10. I'm always reluctant to give scores of 10 out of 10 because you can't really find the perfect signing. Well if you can, this is what it looks like. An 8 million pound signing from Anderlecht a week before the takeover, Vincent Company made 360 appearances and captained the club from lurking halfway down the Premier League and having just shipped 8 goals at Middlesbrough in one of the most embarrassing events known to mankind to 4 league titles, 2 FA Cups and 4 league cups. Outstanding. Pablo Zabayeta, 9 out of 10. Yeah, this man squeezed into City just before the takeover hit and he probably can't believe his luck. When he signed up, he was probably expecting a decade of battles for the Europa League, not 2 league titles and 3 domestic cups. It takes a special player to have withstood the barrage of finance thrown at the City squad but hey, he kept his place. The £6 million recruit from Espanyol did not budge until the arrival of Pep Guardiola. 333 appearances, Zabieta is a modern day club legend. Glauber, 10 out of 10. Signed mere hours before the takeover, when Glauber underwent a medical, City were a club coated in financial turmoil and with Sonji High on the goddamn payroll. By the time he was out of the shower and signing the contract, City were the most financially stable club in world football and still had Sonji High on the goddamn payroll. Glauber was a Brazilian centre half who became a cult hero in Manchester, despite not really doing anything of note, except maybe sneeze on the bench every 20 minutes. He he played just 6 minutes of football at City, with his every touch cheered. The fella even got a standing ovation when he took a throw in and was voted man of the match for 6 goddamn minutes. What was your obsession with him lads? That's like when half of Turkey turned up for the unveiling of Darius Vassell, treating him as some sort of second coming, when in reality the poor lad had the touch of a paraplegic goat. So yes, I'm giving this man a 10 out of 10 because apparently the rules don't apply for this fella. Why not make him the King of Spain? Give him the US presidency, who cares? Apparently rules don't apply. Uh, Alright, I admit it, I'm just jealous because my mother never hugged me as a child.